Welcome mathematicians. In this video, we'll be looking at an amortization table, focusing on an annuity investment. So our scenario for today, Jenny invests $40,000 in an annuity account, which pays an interest of 6% per annum, compounding fortnightly. Jenny also makes fortnightly payments of $600. So an annuity is like a savings account that you put money into, it gains interest. And in this case, it's an annuity investment meaning that we're adding in additional payments on top to try and maximize our savings. So the task is prepare an amortization table for the first five payments. So here's our structure. We have, as always, number of payments in the first column, the payments made in the second, interest earned in the third, principal increased in the fourth, and annuity balance in the fifth. So this is a bit different to a reducing balance loan whereby you're making payments and there's interest being charged and your balance is being reduced. Here we've got interest being earned and principal increased. So our bank balance, our annuity balance will be increasing. So the arrangement was it's a $40,000 investment at the start. Our interest rate is 6% per annum and that's being compounded fortnightly and there's payments being made fortnightly as well. So let's jump into this one. So first of all, we place the 40,000 at the top right hand corner in our annuity balance. That's our starting balance. Next, we have to work out the interest earned on that. So we take our 40,000 and the interest fraction is 6% divided by 100. That would be annually. However, this is a fortnightly compounding with fortnightly periods of payment. So we divide it by 26 because there's 26 fortnights in the year. So that's our conversion from our rate per annum at 6% back to a rate per fortnight. And that returns an interest of $92.31. Next, we make our payment of $600. So in this scenario, with an investment annuity, we've earned $92.31 from our previous balance after our first fortnight. We're adding in $600. When we add those two together, our principal increases by $692.31. So in this case, with an investment annuity, the interest is contributing towards the principal, as is the payment. So we can add those together. We started with $40,000 and our principal increase is $692.31. So after the first fortnight, with additional payments plus interest, we now have an annuity balance of $40,692.31. We now repeat this four-step process for the remaining periods of payment. So we take that balance of $40,692.31 and we calculate the interest gained at the rate we mentioned. And that returns an interest of $93.91. We make our second fortnightly payment of $600, which means our principal is increased by both the interest and the payment being made, the sum of the $600 and the $93.91. So our principal increase is now, for the second payment, $693.91. That increases our annuity balance to $41,386.22. We now apply our interest to that total, and that returns an interest for the third payment of $95.51. We make an additional $600 fortnightly payment, and our principal is increased by the sum of those two values of $695.51. We add that to our previous annuity balance, and that returns a new balance after the three payments of $42,081.73. We then calculate the interest gained from that particular balance, and it comes out to $97.11, we make our fourth payment of $600. We combine those two together to now increase our principal by $697.11, giving us a new annuity balance of $42,778.84. We do this one final time. We take our balance, we apply our interest calculation, and we gain interest of $98.72. We make a fifth payment of $600 this fortnight, and that increases our principal by $698.72, taking our annuity balance after five fortnightly payments to $43,477.56. So there's our five fortnightly period annuity amortization table. Let's now check out a couple of simple examples sourced from VCAA's exams. So example number one, four lines of an amortization table for an annuity investment are shown below. The interest rate for this investment remains constant, but the payment value may vary. So here we have our table showing payments 17, 18, 19, and 20. The balance of the investment after payment number 20 is, as shown, $7,500. 
the value of payment number 20 is closest to. So we want to work out what is this value of the payment. And I did say earlier that the payments may vary. So we may have something other than 100. So let's have a look. We've got five different options here. So step number one, let's calculate the interest rate R for this payment 18. So we had a principal of $6,977.50, and that's returning an interest of 27 and 91 cents. Let's substitute those values in. And we find the rate for this particular interest is 0.4 of a percent. Okay, so 0.4 of this 6977.50 will give us $27.91. The question states that the interest rate remains constant, so we can work out the interest earned from any previous balance based on this 0.4. So step number two, let's calculate the interest earned for payment number 20. So we can take our principal of $7,233.83 and apply a rate of 0.4%. That tells us that the interest earned in the 20th payment period will be $28.94. So step three, we want to calculate the value of this payment. There's different ways of approaching this, but let's consider that the balance here, the balance at payment 20, will be equal to the balance of payment 19, plus the interest, plus the payment. They're both contributing towards this increase in balance. So let's put some numbers in. Balance number 20 was $7,500. Balance number 19 was $7,233.83. Payment 20 is what we're trying to calculate, and the interest was $28.94. When we put our numbers in, we find that payment 20 must be $237.23, which of course is option D. So the value of payment number 20 is closest to $237. Our second and final example, Sarah invests $5,000 in an annuity that pays 3.9% per annum compounding quarterly. At the end of each quarter, immediately after the interest has been paid, she adds $200 to her investment. Three lines of an amortization table for an annuity investment are shown below. So here's our information. What is the balance of the annuity after the second payment? So this gray rectangle, that's what we're trying to work out, this gray cell. So step number one, let's calculate the interest earned for payment number two. We know the interest rate, so to work out the interest, we multiply the principal, $5,248.75, by the interest rate of 3.9%. However, this is compounding quarterly, so this table is showing quarterly payments, so we must divide it by four. That tells me the interest earned at the second payment will be $51.18. We put that into our table. Let's add payment number two. Payment number two in this example is $200. So our third step is to calculate the annuity balance here after payment number two. So we know that our principal increases by both $200 of the payment being made plus the interest of $51.18. We add those two together and we find the principal increases for payment two by $251.18. So we add that total to our previous balance of $5,248.75 and we find the final annuity balance after two payments is $5,499.93, which is option D. Thank you for watching this video on amortization tables and annuity investments. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.